You know, tonight I, I want to begin uh, giving us some, some words, some encouragement, because I, I've found that we, we all have a, a purpose and a destiny in our lives, but we need to understand and we need to see where our significance to fulfill that destiny comes from. And tonight I want to look at God's word and help bring us into a greater understanding of how we can be significant and how we can fulfill the purpose that God has for us. We were born for significance. Amen. Every one of you was born for significance, to be significant in this life. Let me tell you something. If you are a child of God, you are significant. Whatever it might be that your role is in the in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, whatever that rule might be, whatever that rule might be in your, in your home, in your, in your job, wherever you are, you are significant. I know sometimes we feel insignificant in our lives because we, what we do mightn't seem to impact anybody. It mightn't seem to make a difference in anybody's life. And we allow those things to determine how we feel as in, our, in and of ourselves by what we do, all right? Um, but we were all born with the drive and the longing to be significant and to be successful. How many of you want to be successful in your life? In, in whatever it is, whether it is a, a mom, a dad, true? Whether it is, uh, uh, you know, serving in a particular area at your, in the local church or in your community, whatever it is, you want to know that you are successful and you're significant in that area. Now, I want to give some definition to what we are, what we are going to be looking at tonight. And um, significance and, and success is very closely related but it's not the same, all right? Significance and success. Significance comes from who we are, who you are. That's where your significance comes from, amen? Success is a result of what we do, true? But significance is never in what we do. Success is in what we do, but significance is not in what we do. The thing is, the problem that a lot of times we have is that we take our significance from our success. We take our significance from what we do in life. True? True? And because of that, we, we try to do more to be significant. And you know what? The more that you do will never make you fulfill that void or that part of your life that wants to know that you're significant. All right? You know, God's Word says that we are saved by grace um, actually, let's look at it in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to verse 10. This is what it says. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. How are we saved? All right, we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. All right? Not of works, lest 
anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Thank you. It says that we are saved by grace. Grace is what makes you a child of God. And that is what makes you significant. Because there's nothing more that you can do to get to be a child of God. It is by grace you have been saved and how you become a child of God, right? And it goes on to say it is a gift of God. It is a gift of God. It's, a, it's what God gave to you when you received his grace into your life and are saved. You become a child of God. And that is where your significance is. Amen? As a child of God. But funny enough, in, this, in these couple of verses here, if we go back to verse 10, could we go back to verse 10? It says, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, what? For good works. You see, God has made you significant as his child, which is the most significant position that you could ever hold in your life. He has made you that. That was not something that you earned. That was not something you worked to have. No, it cannot happen. That's why your significance is not in what you do. But he goes on to say that because you are significant, you are his workmanship created in Christ for good works. You see, because you are a child of God, there are things that God will want you to do to be successful in. As a matter of fact, everything you do he wants you to be successful in. Amen? But n not that you will be successful to show how significant you are. Amen? You are successful because, or rather significant, because you are his child. Amen? Amen? You know, another, um, it, another thing that I want us to, to understand as we look at this topic of being born for significance is that the reason why sometimes we don't see our significance is because we see within a very limited space of time. True? You see, God sees significance different than how sometimes we measure significance, right? Why? Because God is eternal. All right? You know, we would sometimes consider that <clears throat> what we may have have been able to accomplish in our lives, right, that it has not very little value, okay? But because God is eternal, He sees from way before you were, and He, will, he sees from way after you will be, right? After you're done, He will see way after that. 
So he will know and he can understand that whatever little you may have done in your life, that that, were, that is success in his eyes. But you did it based on not the fact that you wanted to, to just do things and you were just trying to do things, but because you were his child and you were living a lifestyle of obedience to him. We have to really measure our lives by our obedience to God. Amen. You know, it, it talks, when we consider some of the characters in the Bible, like, um, like the man D, um, Moses, all right? Moses grew up in the palace in Egypt. True? All right, he was a Hebrew. They were killing, Pharaoh was killing out all the, 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 the Hebrew children, um, male child that was being born. They were killing them out. And um, his, his, his parents, they put him in a, in a basket, sent him down the, the river. He came, was, was, was adopted into, he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, and she was, he was adopted into the family. He became like a son. She loved him and so forth, and he became a prince in Egypt. All right? Moses, being a prince in Egypt, was not what we look back as the thing that made him significant in his life. What made him significant and caused him to see the success that he had was when he came back to the reality that he was a Hebrew. He was a child of God. True? He was a child of God that had an, a purpose that was given to him by God. So, he had to, to realize that first that he was a child of God and he had a purpose for God. True? True? So in other words, he came down to a lower position. He actually started, had to realize that he had to associate himself with being a slave because the Israelite people at the time were slaves. But do you know that was more significant in, for him than to stay in the palace and be a prince. Amen. So what we might think as, hey, that's not significant, that's not, that's not going to make me feel any better about myself. I can't have no significance here. In our eyes, it's totally different in his eyes. True? True? He lowered himself. It says that he chose. In the book of Hebrews, it says, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, right, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. So I want us to start to really consider in our lives what are we holding on to that, is, that we need to let go of to truly associate with what, is, what God wants us to, to, to ensure that we are walking in the significance of Him as a child of God? Amen. You know, I've heard many testimonies of, of people who God called and they, ha they left, all right, they left their well-paying job, their great positions in this life to follow 
God and to obey God and to respond to God. And because of that, it has a, a totally different view from God's perspective over their life today. Because they chose to go and obey God. They could have held on to the $100,000 a year job. But would that have given them significance in God's eyes? God's definition of significance is way different than what we consider to be significant. Amen? You know, what we might, we may consider to be a failure or a loss, God sees differently. True? What we consider to be a failure or a loss, you know, consider the John the Baptist. John the Baptist lived his life and only two, six months of his life, he lived to be about 30-something, right? Or 31, 32, somewhere there, right? But only six months of his life, he preached and called the children of Israel back to God. But Jesus called him one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. True? You see, we would look back at that and say, hey, you know what? This guy fell short of his ministry. Boy. He fell short of what God had called him to do because he was, you know, he was, he was killed and so forth, right? We, un, we know what had happened. Herod killed him. And it seemed like, you know, he could have done so much more. But Jesus called him one of the greatest. Because from God's perspective, your significance is in your obedience and surrender to God. Not what you do. Amen. If you consider, you know, uh, looking at... at um, some of the martyrs in, in church history, it will seem like there was, you know, no reason for their lives. You know, they might have done so much to try to, you know, do, and, and then they were cut short because they were martyred and killed. Amen. When you look back even in, in, in uh, biblical history, you see these, these men and women who seem to be very, in, very sig insignificant in their lives. Consider like Rehab. All she did was she allowed the children of Israel to, es the, 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 to the spies, right? She allowed them to escape out of Jericho. But she was so significant that she became a part of the heroes of faith in the book of Hebrews right along with Moses and Elijah and all these different guys. But what? What did she do? She was willing to obey God. She was willing to surrender to God and what God had uh, determined for her life. Amen? Amen. See, the world is changing. All right, there's no two ways about it. And what, we may be con and what may be considered now to be important may not mean anything 50 or 100 years from now. True? See, God's, God never changes his, um, his definition of significance and success will never change. His definition of significance and success. Amen? If we are to truly succeed 
in life, we are to succeed by God's definition. Amen. So we want to, I want to, uh, to look at uh, us really jumping into this pursuit of becoming an understanding that we were born for significance. Amen? You know, a lot of times the world calls significance, you know, wealth or fame or power. But God's definition of significance is really an invitation for us to discover all that He intended for us to become in this life. It's a journey. It's a, it's a relationship he's, he's calling us to enter in. That's why first we have to be come sons and daughters. That's why it says we are saved by grace through feet. You have to become a child. Amen. So you see, your greatest place of significance is becoming a child. It's not becoming a king. It's not becoming wealthy and mighty in this world. But if you become a child, that is your greatest place of significance. Amen. And that becoming a child is a journey. Amen. It's a journey. It's an invitation to walk with God along that path that He has called you to because your significance is going to lead you into success. True? It's going to lead you into success. But your success is not determined by what man calls success. Amen. <clears throat> but I must say that <clears throat> there will be challenges to walking in significance and seeing success in your life because. You have to learn to walk in humility. Amen. You have to learn to walk in humility. Because what, what may have required of David, King David in the Bible, to, to be a king, right, would have been the same thing that was required of John the Baptist to be dressed as a prophet who had just coat skin and ate locusts. Right? And so humility is very necessary because David... To be the king, he had to humble himself to say, hey, God, that's what you want for me? Hey, I'm going to step into it. I'm going to become what you meant me to be as a king. Amen. And John the Baptist, the same way, hey, God, you want me to be a prophet who prepares the way of the Lord to come? to declare and to speak these things and to bring people to that place of knowing that, hey, the Savior is coming on the scene. The Savior is going to be here to bring salvation to his people. Lord, I'm going to do it. It might make me look like I'm nothing. It might make me look like I'm insignificant but I'm going to do it. That's why humility is so necessary. That's why that will be the greatest challenge as we get on this journey to becoming and recognizing our significance. Amen? See, the thing is, is that I know for, 
for probably most of us, we understand our significance. We understand that, you know, we are significant, not just, not by what we do, all right, but by who God has made us to be, his child, his children. But I want us to understand something is that sometimes we settle for insignificance because it's easier to manage a life that people expect less of. True? Do you know that to step out and say something that God told you that you know is God, right, carries with it a weight of responsibility upon you to fulfill that thing? True? For you to do it according to how God wants it to be done, right? It, it is a big responsibility. And I believe that's sometimes the reason why some of us believers just settle, hey, you know what? It's better I just stay within a safe place of just doing nothing or being nothing or accomplishing nothing rather than to say, hey, you know what? God wants to do great things through my life. That God has called me to this, and God has called me to accomplish this. True? But God is calling us to humility. Humility to obey Him. That's what humility truly is. Amen? You know, the... When we, if we are denying God's purpose for our lives, it is nothing close to humility. Amen. What we need to be denying is ourselves. That's what the Word of God says. So if God tells you to do something that seems to be great, that seems to be uh, um, what others consider to be, you know, uh, make you popular and all these different things. If God tell you to do it, then do it. Because denying that, just because we we want to walk in humility, is is probably more pride than humility. Amen. See, our significance is based on His standard, becoming a child. Being a servant of all. Isn't that what he said? When the disciples asked him, hey, you know, who's the greatest? Uh, or, or how can we be, be, be great? He said, you must become what? The servant of all. Amen. That's his standard. That's his basis of significance. <clears throat> you know, we... we um, in the Bible school presently, but something happened, uh, not presently, but from the, the classes that we had even before COVID, where we, we started having like an internship uh, time where we would have the students, you know, function in different areas of the church, different uh, departments. And some of them um, were, of course, like the media, we would have the uh, the children's ministry, all the different ministries, the, um, the maintenance, the cleaning, and these different things. You know, and, and I, I remembered one of the, the students saying to us, hey, you know what, I don't mind being in the cleaning ministry, but don't let me clean the toilets. You see, that was, that, that to me was saying, hey, you know what, I'll do something low, but don't let me go that low. What they consider to be low. True? See, if we are not willing to be a servant, then we will never fulfill the purpose that God has created us to be. Amen? Amen?
See, when we, uh, when we say yes to significance by his definition, we become one he can trust with promotion. Amen. Now, David never wanted to be a king. He never asked to be a king, in other words. True? But because he was willing to say, hey, God, all right, take care of my father's sheep, okay. Lord, obey my father to carry a lunch for my brothers, okay. Lord, protect my father's sheep by killing a bear and a, a, and a lion and these different things, okay. Because he was willing to say yes to God's definition of significance, God was able to trust him with great promotion. You know, and I, I believe that if, if we as a church want to truly see our lives blossom, see our lives really start taking off to seeing God promote us in the areas that he has led us into and he wants to put us into. See, we are called to be salt and light in the youth. Amen. We are called to be salt and light in the youth. And some of the places he will send us and he will put us in might be places that is, is very visible. Might be places that people would, would uh, be fighting to want to be. But he has called you there because he has a reason for you being there. And if that's where he wants you to be, he wants you to have the right heart in walking into a place like that. Amen. But he has to be able to entrust you with that promotion. That promotion is not a promotion to get you swell-headed. Amen. Do you, if you would remember, when David was called to, to play music for Saul, right? It says that after some time, he went back to the fields. In other words, here it is, David was sitting in the courts of the king. It would have been the most comfortable, huh? Most leisure place in Israel. But he was called to go back to his father's sheep. Which usually means sitting in the open, under the open skies for days upon days. Probably on a rock. That might be a pillow. Huh? On hard ground. So when, when David was given that position to serve as the king, it was because of him being willing to say, God, I humble myself to go and to do and to be wherever you want me to be. And because of that, God could have entrusted him to being a king. What is your place tonight that God has called you and given you a purpose to fulfill. That he's waiting on your decision to humble yourself. He's waiting on you so that he could trust you that whether it is a high place or it is a place that mightn't seem as very significant, what is he waiting on you to do? Tonight, I want to challenge us. God wants to entrust his people. He wants to entrust his church with great promotion. He wants to entrust your life 
with great promotion. He wants to cause you to succeed and excel in your life. But can he trust you? Are you giving him a reason to trust you? Amen. Tonight I ask this question to us because we are coming into a new year in, a, in about a month or so. We'll be coming into a new year. All right? Just over a month. We'll be coming into a new year. And I believe as we, we cross over into 2024 that God will begin and wants to cause us to accelerate, press the accelerator a little more. He wants to bring some promotions into our lives. He wants to accelerate his plans and his purposes for our nation, for your life. But can he trust us? Is our heart in the right place? Are we taking our place of significance from being his child? Or are we looking at just doing great things? Those great things will come, but let's do it from a place of being a child of God, humbled and obedient to Him when He calls, when He directs, when He brings us into those places. Amen? Amen. Let's stand.